So how, how did you like the interview? It was very interesting. Uh, I didn't know uh, so, so many things about the film. The fact that they have a WhatsApp group is very funny to know that. And yes, you, you can feel the intimacy uh, among the people there. Uh, I, I, I was very touched because I, I haven't seen the film and uh, you can feel the connection uh, and it's a very sensitive film. It's uh, something because, as she said, you know, for the, from our history, uh, Malvinas is a very emotional issue. And, you know, hearing her, you can, you can feel a lot of uh, things that uh, go behind the scenes. And, uh, you know the the part that I like was the the that scenes in which the British were with British and Argentines with Argentine. I, I think that this was very, you know, you can see through uh, there. Is that is that in the party scene or yeah, which scene? In the party scene, I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, me too, me too, I thought, because they all come together at a certain point, you know, they become other people yes. because, you know, they're just more at ease and... Yeah, but here in the British saying, this is very urgent and you can feel that this and, okay, it's their yeah. project, they, they were like angry, you know, <laughs> and no, uh, it was, but then, and she, she's very, very intense, very interesting. I, I, I would like to know how she came with the whole idea because you know it's very original i feel yeah oh definitely well i guess that the fact she's a performer and you know she yeah. comes from uh, you know different places and the and so she really likes that yeah she used her um, she used her, her knowledge very very well you know the way it started in a, in a sort of a theater environment and then, then it turned into a movie so she used her skills very very well yeah and I also liked the makeup of the people, you know, the fact that it touched on different issues, you know, a cultural issues, language issues as well. That the guy from Nepal, who I thought was from India originally, <laughs> um, he he couldn't, you know, he's, he was speaking and he couldn't understand the language or he said that there were barriers, a little bit of a cultural different uh, um, difficulty there. So, but it all came together very, very nicely, you know, and I thought some of the things where the, the cultures came together were, were quite funny as well, because she touched on comedy as well. And I think you can see that they had a lot of laughter, a lot of enjoyment, a lot of honesty, you know, got to know each other. For example, you know, in the, in the, in the party scene, <laughs> the guy when he took his trousers down, he was drunk. You know, all those type of things just brings the camaraderie um, together and it shows that there's a very good unit there as well. And they all overcame the barriers through their friendship, through their, you know, their, their, their experiences as well in talking. Yes, true. Yeah, it's a very difficult topic, and if you don't put like hints of co of comedy, it's gonna be very hard to go through. And yeah, probably some people don't just uh, don't like to watch just sad sadness. So you need to put some some comedy on it. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking, uh, I don't know if someone else uh, got this. Uh, or the ones who watch the film about um, stereotypes in, in the film, because obviously there are the two sides, the Argentinian and the British. Um, there are no like a, um, high um, highlights from the stereotypes. But I don't feel that there were stereotypes because you know the the British, but for me at least, uh, they they I, I feel them like very sensitive and you know connected and the Argentine were you know like just normal human people you you don't feel yes. like enemies uh, and I don't know if they are the typical Argentine or the typical British I don't know well from the from the from the um, party scene we get these direct questions from the uh, two British as, um, guys as you say when they, they split um i think is low 
I, I think it's the guy who asked the other guy, um, oh, I'm tired of this project, it's so Argentinian. And, and so there is like a, this uh, uh, um, division, basically. But yeah, there are no like, uh, that's the point, there are no uh, huge stereotypes in the film. And I was thinking if they were needed or they were not, or they were actually, I liked um, I liked the way that the Nepalese was teaching the other guy how to box. That was quite funny. <laughs> I guess that's where the comedy comes from. But you know, he he kind of portrayed himself as a as a fighter. But maybe I don't know if he was. That was quite an interesting thing as well. I thought. Yeah. But that was a good scene. So there was lots of lots of scenes in the scene when they're all together in the swimming pool as well. And then the dog uh, running around. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, he was in the background doing his exercises and all that. He's like you know as if he was just in the background rather than, you know, at the forefront. Cause I, I thought the Argentinian guy was the real, real force of the, of the, of the, the film, the presence. He had a lot of, you know, character as well. A lot of character. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember his name, sorry, but uh, he reminded me of a, a, a smaller version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think um, for me, the film is actually, it's a very intellectual film, in a sense. Um, and the difficulty I had with the film is that I could really sense that as a play, as a, as a theater performance, it was probably stronger than the film. Um, for a number of reasons. So the, the other question is that whenever cinema takes theater and as 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 um as a, as a genre uh as, as well as you know um a format at the center of its filmmaking it's not straightforward there's something that kind of makes you stopping and thinking and reflecting but it's it's not a film it's not a documentary it's not a theater play it's and it's a mix of everything so for me the beginning was very much around, okay, what is this thing? <laughs> so I spent a bit of, you know, the beginning of the film trying to make up, make a sense of what was happening and understanding what it was. And then I relaxed with that. And I realized that the reason why the English probably said this is very Argentinian, it's because it's a very intellectual film. It's, um, you know, it's 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 a film that very much tries to say things without saying them. So, for example, there's the guy who keeps on repeating the same trauma, the same story, and it's the story of him holding, you know, this uh, Argentinian guy who could speak English and in the end dies in his arms, which is also the story that then we. Uh, you know, learn he actually gave into, um, you know, uh, an interview. And this thing of this trauma coming back and coming back and coming back and these lives that stop there and how do you unlock that? Could have said in two minutes <laughs> and the whole film was built on it. So, you know what yeah. I mean? There's quite a lot of frustration yeah. as a viewer. For me, the film, yeah, the film starts there and then it ends there. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think it's, it's more of uh, enjoying it. I mean, obviously, yeah, as, as as you mentioned, there are many things going on, and 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 like trying to identify these things might 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 get you uh, bored or stuff. But I think it's more than enjoying it. Or oh, I don't know if someone has got that impression of. Uh, too, too many things going on. Is it not slightly symptomatic of his PTSD that he can't actually get away from that? That this is the thing that he remembers, that it's totally overcome his life and that's why it overcomes the film as well, is that this is the thing, that yeah. of all the things that happened, this is the thing that he remembers for 
so many reasons for the violence, for the empathy, for the realization that everybody's just a person and what the hell are we fighting for this little piece of land for? I think that the repetition kind of just shows the effect of what happened to them. Yeah, I completely agree. That's why I'm saying it's a very theatrical piece because that's not something that you normally do in, uh, in, in, in a film. Yeah, that's, well, that, that's that, what, this, is, this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so, yeah. but in fact, you know, it's presented as a doc of fiction, you know, so a mix of the two, which, as we know, usually, you know, it just gives different results, you know, being depending on the viewer, for example, uh, which is, you know, because there's some a bit of reality, a bit of fiction, everything, you know, it's just um, kind kind of strange, yeah. Mm. Sorry, yeah, I yeah. you. What, a little bit of uh, my impression because I saw the play in Buenos Aires. Ah, so seeing yeah. it live, it it, it was a, a huge uh, success, and and I can tell you all the diplomats of Argentina living in Buenos Aires went to see it because Malvinas uh -huh. is a big issue for us. Mm -hmm. So, my feeling and and hearing. Um, the director and the creator that she was very small when the war took place. Uh, I was 15. Um, so, so I have some impression of, of the human beings involved. Uh, and the, the impression many of us got, and we were discussing it at the ministry afterwards, is that in a way it, it trans transmits a reality and a message. Uh, the message is, is something that um, many diplomats interested in culture and history always uh, try to recover, which is uh, what uh, was San Martin thinking when he crossed the Andes, you know? Um, but there you have these guys that were participants in big historic deeds, and they are still there. And they are telling you their human stories. And, and in a way, many people took it in the sense that this is not to forget. One day they will not be there. And we are kind of freezing the stories for the future. Um, but also, you know, the, the, the question that was mentioned before that um, I think that the, the superhuman aspect of this because they fought a war and they are able to interrelate almost as friends. But in reality, um, beyond us diplomats and Alessandra knows, uh, my only British friend is a Scotsman, <laughs> not an Englishman, <laughs> because you know, you, you have these little things uh, w when you were taught to have a position. But the reality that I, I wanted to mention is that if you go to Buenos Aires and you're British, people welcome you. They are not going to discuss the Malvinas with you. And here, when you mention you're from Argentina, people mention Maradona, the hand of God or whatever, but they don't mention the Malvinas. So in a way, the, there is this human approach there, irrespective of this big issue. And, and that is very evident in the most critical, um, how to say, um, approach, which is of the combatants. Um, and that is, uh, I agree um, with the comment made that it is more striking when you see it live, mm. but, but still the, the, the movie captures a lot of it. Yeah. You know, like cinema, uh, gives you the opportunity of watching faces, you know, getting the, the feeling, the, the, you know, it's very different from theater because, in, you know, in theater you, has, you have like a point of view, you are like far from the, the, the scene and cinema is so immersive that, you know, I, I, I uh, agree with Christian, like I, enjoy the film without thinking too much if it is, I don't know, theater, cinema, doku, I don't know what. I, I, for me, it was like a, 
very sentimental film. That that's, uh, was the thing that I enjoyed the most. You know, it was very straightforward for me at least. Sure. Yeah, well, I think that the reason why Lola Arias decided on this theme is what um, uh, Fernanda was saying before, you know, it's a subject that nobody wants to talk about. I mean, especially not as a confrontation, you know, not with, you know, with the English on one side, the Argentina on the other. So that's why it came about. And it was good that it started as a work in progress, as, as a play, and then it eventually turned as a recorded version in, in a film. Lisa? Oh, sorry, I was going to say two things. I was going to say, Fernanda, I'm really sorry that that's the impression that you get of British people because that's, I'm surprised half the population even knows the Falklands Malvinas war happened. And I'm going to guarantee you that if you went onto the street and asked people to put a pin in a map and where is it, they absolutely wouldn't know. So <laughs> I think that that's like a, a tragedy in itself. And I think that that's a very bad thing that British people have done and I'm surprised and disappointed and I apologize on behalf of British people. Um, yeah, the other thing that I was going to say is that yeah. if you look forwards, the the landscape of conflict has completely changed from from where the the conflict that we're talking about now is, which was very conventional war where you take a piece of land and you hold it and you create a military strength. And what's happening now in, in conflict through civil wars in Africa and Latin America, through Iraq, Afghanistan, Bosnia, wherever, is it's much more insurgent, counterinsurgency. There's, there's not an obvious insignia necessarily of what the enemy is or is not. And it would be very interesting to do this exact same project in 20 years time with people from these conflicts, because I don't think that they will be able to relate to each other in the same way that these people do. Um, could I add something, Lisa? Um, my comment was exactly what you mentioned. Um, I would say that with the exception of the trained diplomats, <laughs> that we are brainwashed in a position. The rest of the population, I mean, to Argentina, it's, it is very emotional out in the streets but they are still welcoming by the British. After all, we're fans of the Beatles and many other things. I mean, British culture is all over. Um, and same in the UK, and probably in the UK, the islands are less known than in Argentina, but people are very welcoming. Um, the question of conflict that you mentioned is very interesting because, you know, um, Malvinas Islands is the first time that the Geneva Convention and the Maritime War applied after World War II. That was the first time. And why? It's because these rules of war that were um, negotiated and drafted for conventional war. So probably it's the last conventional war in our times. Um, as Lisa said, today you have insurgents and, and you have these situations of a government combating its own population, you know, a massive violation, violations of human rights. Um, so uh, I agree. Um, there are some projects in the International Criminal Court to do videos and, and probably in the future there will be films with the victims. And most probably the, the, the relation there is not going to be the same, I agree, because the victim of violations of human rights in Uganda were not related to uh, the uh, children of Idi Amin very well, you know, so I agree, but, but, but that is important because I think that uh, this war, because of the scenery where it took place, it didn't involve in general, the civilian population that was very small, and it was like a traditional war uh, from the 1940s. Uh, it's just that the, the thing that really <clears throat> struck me um, is this sense that a war makes things irreconcilable, in a sense. Even if there is a film, even if these people have managed to find a way to talk to each other, even if they don't speak the same language, 
they share a stage, they share a film. There's something so uh, impossible for a human being to overcome, which is the killing and the fear of being killed. It's something that is so non-anti-human against our nature in a sense. I mean, although, you know, if we kill, that's part of who we are as well, but, you know, that, that actually made me thinking a lot about how really we should not get there in the first place, because once a war has happened, I really, I, you know, there's no, for, there's no forgetting. This is the thing. I mean, the fact that the guy couldn't forget his own trauma is also a collective thing. As people, we cannot forget. In fact, that's, there's a moment when the two start talking and it's like, okay, but it was French. Oh no, actually it was before it was uh, Spanish. Oh, but actually it wasn't Spanish because, and, and, and so you can see all these conflicts around this piece of land that have been going on for centuries. And before then, and nobody mentioned that, you know, there were other inhabitants before, you know, the, the invaders came. And, 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 and so all these sequence of wars will never really be forgotten. And and so in a sense, um, you know, that that is really what made me kind of rethinking the, 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 the possibility of reconciliation. Is that really possible? It's a question mark. Yeah. Well, that, that's that's really a big question. And, and uh, yeah, we, we should probably in uh, this probably what was also one of the aims of, of Lola Arias as well, you know, just to, to, to see what these people would do. And then and finally, yeah, well, this is also, I guess, up to, to each one of us, you know, how we see the world. It, it's um, it, it's a, the it's, it's like, a, I guess, for, for the pandemic as well, you know, one could be very pessimistic and can be very optimistic, you know, you can see the glass half full or half empty, just depends really, the many, many different things. So anybody has got, uh, what, what's, uh, what's everybody's uh, opinion on this? I think that this part of the human being, I, I think that reconciliation is possible. Yes, I'm sure, because history shows that it is possible even in civil worlds, even in, you know, our own history is very, uh, you know, difficult and full of, you know, confrontation. And we have 30,000 people missing during our own dictatorship. And I think that, you know, you can overcome and continue. And I think that the, with, uh, with British people, with English people, we have a lot in common, as Fernanda says, you know, we have the culture, we have friends, I have a lot of British friends and, you know, you can go with your life and not thinking about the world all the time, you know, yes. I, I, I think that, yes, it's possible because we are both things. We are, you know, shallow and light and magic and loose and everything and, you know, it's just a human being. We are like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We also need some political will and help. Um, and if you look at um, at history, um, the Malvinas war is, is still recent. And, and, and I remember that there, there is a, a part of the national anthem of Argentina that I like very much, that, uh, because it talks about how humiliated Spain was. But interestingly, uh, after independence, after many years, when we started receiving immigrants from Spain, deliberately, that part uh, was subjected to the decision not to be sung in schools uh, to promote reconciliation with Spain. Uh, but it took a long time. It was like 50 years after independence, after the wars of independence. Um, and then 100 years after our independence, uh, we were uh, collecting money in Buenos Aires to send to the victims of the Spanish Civil War, but it took 100 years. 
Um, but there was also political will there. Uh, this case is quite recent, uh, and the governments have, have not been, have not found the, the way of facilitating that. Um, but in terms of history, I, I think that it is still recent, but um, probably culture, and that is why this film and, and the play are very uh, commendable. Culture is probably one of the drivers that can unite us. Um, Argentina is probably the number one fan of the Beatles in Latin America. Uh, there is a lot of admiration when we go to the United States, not me because I lived in New York, but when you go to the United States, they ask you, where are you from? Because unlike the rest of Latin America, we don't speak with an American accent. Why? Because our schools uh, follow the British system of teaching English. So there is a lot in common and culture clearly is something that if, if there is political will can be taken as a driver. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think on this point, uh, we, we can just uh, uh, close a bit the, um, the discussion because it, that's what the festival and that's what the Argentina Cine Club is all about. You know, we're trying to, to portray culture. We're, we're trying to reach out and uh, create connections with everybody, with you know, all kind of countries, being in London, being in the UK. And, uh, and, you know, we, we hope that we really manage to, even if tonight, I have to say that we were the victim of a cyber attack. You, you yeah. were in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were attacked. And then so I had to change the link and everything. It was just a group of people that uh, got the password and just let, you know, everybody in. So it's, it's been really, uh, we were uh, under attack, under siege. <laughs> But we managed to, to survive. So I really hope that we can continue this beautiful collaboration with the embassy, maybe with another online cine club. Or, or finally, let's go back to live events one day. <laughs> That'd be really nice. Uh, yeah, so, so thank you, uh, everybody, for coming. Um, next week, we're, we're going to start the Danish uh, cine club. So um, that, that's going to be all uh, Scandinavia. So slightly different from Argentina, but still, you know, diversity is, is our, uh, you know, strong point, so. Can I say something? Sure. Just to finalize, I thank you very much for that cycle also because my husband is from Iceland. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah, yeah, we got also the, the uh, Icelandic cinema. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, yeah, we're going to cover all of it. Also, we got Norway coming up in February as well as a, a new entry. Yeah, so, they have great films. Yeah, they do, they really do. Completely yeah. different. Each cinema, each country, yeah. they really have a very precise way of, of portraying culture. So that's, that's true. yeah, so yeah. We're there's, also doing there's so many, um, programs like you know series is now from scandinavia so it's becoming really really popular it's like a new you know, hub or buzz you know so it'd be good really good to see some sort of scandinavian movies as well because you kind of really get into them you know there's so many good characters again and then um... the danish are very good for creepies and the icelanders are very good for depressive films <laughs> yeah, but they also have humor i have to say <laughs> maybe depressing humor but they do have a black humor yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, sorry, what did you say? the Danish are what? Sorry, did you say? Very good for creamies. Everything that is police uh, and investigation. Yes. Very, very good. Like Borgen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, super yeah, drama. Bridge, the bridge. Yeah, very good. But, but none, uh, all the three films that I'm showing have nothing to do really with, I mean, they are in a way thrillers, but they're, uh, yeah, cult movies um, that are more talking about family ties. Right. Thank okay. you very much, Paula. Thanks for organizing. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.